in this video, I want to prove this uh, famous formula for finding uh, amount uh, when you're calculating compound interest. So compound interest is uh, when you get interest on interest. Okay, so let's take a very simple example to prove this formula. Now this formula says amount is equal to P, which stands for principal, times 1 plus R divided by N raised to NT, where R is the rate of interest and general, generally written as a decimal. So this, you can write rate of interest as a decimal, and N is the number of times per year interest is compounded. So let's take a simple example, and T stands for the number of years. So let's say the principal, you're depositing $100. Your rate of interest is 10%. Okay, now rate of interest is one thing that you should understand is this 10% is always per 100, percent is always per 100 per annum, per annum. This is by default you should understand. That means if you're getting, if you are getting 10% interest, you are, it means on every $100 you're going to get $10 at the end of one year. So this as a decimal is 0 0.1 okay and let's say the number of years is t stands for number of years is 10 years so and let's take the first example when you're compounding yearly when you're compounding yearly what happens when you're compounding every year or at the end of one year so your amount your A1, which is the amount after one year, would be your principal, which is 100, plus the interest on your 100. So that means you get 10% of $100 after one year. So 10% of 100 is 10, so this is 100 plus 10, which is 110. Okay, A2 is the amount after, after two years. That means the principal for the second year would be the amount of the first year. So your amount after one, two years would be 110, which is the amount after one year plus 10% of 110. This is a long way of doing, but let's do the long way and then you can understand the shorter way, which is 10% of 110 is 11, which is 100 and, uh, this is not 100, sorry, this is 110. 110 plus 11, which is 121. A3, A3 would be 121 plus 10% of 121, which is 121 plus 10% is 12.1 which is 133.1. Now, how can we do this in a faster way? The same thing can also be written as this is equal to 100 times 1.1 raised to 1. This would be 100. This is called a multiplier. This 1.1 is a multiplier. That means you're increasing by 10%. So in, when you're increasing by 10%, the multiplier would be 1.1. So this would 121 you can get by 100 times 1.1 squared. And this you will get by 100 times 1.1 to the power 3. So let me show this on a simple calculator. So uh, this has got a power k, hopefully. Okay, now let me take a graphic calculator. So, if you go a simple calc, suppose if you go 100 times 1.1 will give you 110. That's what I said. And if you go 100 times 1.1 squared, that will give you 121. And this you'll get 100 times 1.1 raised to 3, which is 133.1. Okay, so generally we can say after t 
10 years. So if you go on, you can say A10 would be using the same formula would be 100 times 1.1 raised to 10. Now writing this in a in this form, this is the same as writing 100 times 1.1. I can write as 1 plus uh, 0.1, which is the rate of interest as a decimal divided by 1 because you're compounding it 1 times every year raised to 1 times 10. This and this are one and the same. Okay, so this is how you can find the compound interest if it is compounded every year. So let me do if it's half yearly. So compounded every 6 months. Compounded every six months or half yearly. Now here you have to make a change here. The rate of interest is 10 percent. The rate of interest is 10 percent. It's per hundred per annum. So for six months your rate would be five percent. For six months every six months you'll get only five percent because for this is per hundred per annum. For every year you're going to get 10 percent. So for every six months, you're going to get only 5%. So this as a decimal is 0 0.05. So here the multiplier, so I'll say this is the multiplier. Your multiplier is going to become 1.05. When the rate of interest is 0 0.1, the multiplier is 1.1. Okay, so 1 plus the rate of interest will give you the multiplier. So here the multiplier is 1 plus, uh, 1 plus 0 0.05, which is 1.05. So I'll say A1, that means after six months, after the first compounding, the amount after the first compounding or after six months would be 1.05 raised to 1. A2 would become 100 times 1.05 squared. So if you keep this compounding, in 10 years they've got how many compoundings? In one year you've got two compoundings, so in 10 years you've got 20 compoundings. So A20 would be 100 times 1.05 raised to 20. Now this I'm going to write in the general form, so can I write this as 100 times 1 plus the rate of interest, the original rate of interest was 0.1. So 0.05 can be written as 0.1 divided by 2 raised to 2 times 10. So this and this are the same. So let me show you that 1 plus 0.1 divided by 2. Or you can do, you don't need to 0.1 divided by 2 is 0.05. So let me show this. 1 plus 0.1 divided by 2 is 1.05 and this 20 I've written as 2 times 10. So now what happens if it is uh, done quarterly? So let me finish this and I'll continue in the next part. Compounded, suppose if it is compounded, compounded every 3 months every three months or quarterly. So one year has how many quarters? One year has four quarters, so you have to divide. So your rate of interest would be 0.1, which is 10 percent, divided by four. 0.1 divided by four is uh, 0.25, okay, or 0.25. 025. Okay, so let me confirm that. 0 0.1 divided by 4 is 0 0.025. So your rate of interest is 0 0.025 or 2.5 percent. 0 0.025 is 2.5 percent. Every year you're getting 10 percent, so half yearly you're getting 5 percent. So quarterly you're going to get 2.5 percent. And this implies your multiplier your multiplier would be 
would be 1.025. So here, A1, A1 means after the first three months, you're going to get 100 times 1.025 raised to 1. Your A2 is going to be after after six months or two, three months, that is six months, you're going to get 100 times 1.025 squared. So in 10 years, you got how many? In one year, you got four quarters, so A40 means after 10 years, you have 40 quarters, you're going to get 100 times 1.025 raised to 40. Now the same thing can be written as 100 times 1 plus 0 0.1, 0 0.1 divided by 4. You're dividing your R, so this is your original R which is 0 0.1 divided by 4 raised to 4 times 10, which is going to be, uh, and this is this and this are the same. Okay, and so on. If you continue, thus suppose let's let me finish off with every month. Suppose if it is compounded, compounded every month, compounded every month. If you're compounding every month, your rate of interest is going to get smaller. So your rate of interest would be 0 0.1 divided by 12. Okay, I'm not going to simplify this. This is not going to be a neat number. So your A1, that means if after one year, sorry, after one month, your rate, rate of interest, sorry, your amount after one month would be 100 times this. Your multiply is going to be 1 plus 0 0.1 divided by 12 raised to 1. Your A2 your A2 is uh, after two months, it will be 100 times your multiply is going to be 1.1 1. 1 plus 0. 0.1 divided by 12 raised to 2. And after 10 years, you're going to have one year, you're going to have 12 compoundings. So after 10 years, you're going to have 120 compoundings. So A120 would be 100 times 1 plus. 0 0.1 divided by 12 raised to 120 is is equal to same as saying 12 times 10. So if you look at these formulas, so let me circle this. You look at this, this, and this are the same. So this is your n. In this case, your n is 12, and your n is changing. So your rate of interest, your R is 0 0.1. This is your R, this is your R, this is R, and this is your T. Your T, your R and T is remaining the same. What is changing is your N. In this case, your N is 12, because you're doing 12 compoundings in one year. Yeah, in this case, your this is your N, and this is also your N. This and this are remaining the same, 0.1 and 10. If you do every two months, so your n is, this is n, and this is also n. So let me finish finally with, say, if it's every day, compounding, compounding every day. If suppose the bank says that we compound every day, how much would you get after 10 years compounding every day? So your rate of interest, your R is going to be 0 0.1 divided by 365. So after one day, you're going to get 100. Your multiply is going to be 1 plus 0 0.1 divided by 365 raised to 1. And after one year has 365 days, so after 3,650 compoundings, so in 10 years, you'll have 3,650 compoundings. So let's check that. It'll be one, 100 times 1 plus 
0 0.1 divided by 365 raised to 365 times 10. So let's check this. Suppose if you're depositing $100 and if it's your bank is compounding every day, how much would you get? So you, know, you will get 100 bracket 1 plus 0 0.1 divided by 365 raised to 3650 will be uh, this will be a huge amount no I've done a mistake so 100 bracket 1 plus 0 0.1 divided by uh, 365 raised to 3650 yeah you'll get 271 it you after if it's compounded every day you'll get 272 dollars to round it so you can say you get 272 dollars after one year so the let me write the formula again so this is the formula which is a neat formula to remember in the next video i'm going to prove that this formula if it's if you are compounding it for continuously infinite times. Uh, I'm going to prove this formula, which is A comp amount is equal to P times E to the power R times T. E stands for a number.